Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Koi Garden by Floyd Liu. The game plays two to four players, takes roughly 15 minutes to play, and is for ages eight and up. And in the game Koi Garden, you are trying to build a tranquil koi pond, trying to gain zen as you move creatures around the board. Uh, you'll be using cards as placement devices to create your garden as you select certain cards or tiles, I should say. You'll be moving them uh, uh, along with placing them and then moving these little creatures from a starting point on your grid uh, across the garden, scoring as many points as possible. And each of these creatures kind of function in a unique way. There's rules as to how you can place creatures and where you can move them, whether you can move them through certain things or whether you want to use a special ability at a cost to you. And the game will play over a certain number of rounds and whoever has the most points at the end of the game, meaning the most zen, is the winner. Let's take a look at the game down below. I'll show you how it's played and then we'll come up for my review of the game Koi Garden. Welcome to the Koi Garden, and currently I have the game set up for two players. Go ahead and give every single player a wild starting tile. These guys are going to be these dark green squares here. Uh, go ahead and also give them a scoring point tracker. You'll have the ones or single digits here and the double digits here. And if you flip it over, you'll have more scoring points available. So when you score points like one point, two, three, and four, you can track it with this card. Then when you gain 10, you can do it like that. And then you can, of course, turn it for 20, 21, 22. I think you get the idea. Uh, you're also going to give every player a random creature. There's four starting creatures and they're going to have have colored backs so right now I've given this player over here the koi and this player over here the catfish uh, then after that you're going to go ahead and set up all these lanterns to the sides so that players can have easy reach of them and any extra creatures and of course extra po point scoring trackers and wilds can be set aside as well go ahead and shuffle the koi garden deck and deal out four cards and then put four random creatures above each uh, one of the, above each of the four cards as you can see here along with their little creature tokens so there should be four for each any additionals like these guys here can also be set aside you're also going to go ahead and choose a tool. They gave me one tool, which is the ancient coin. Well, I'll go ahead and place it right there. That is going to be in play for the entire game, and everybody will have the option to utilize it, supposing that they can or want to. Then begin the game. It's pretty simple how the game works. On your turn, you're going to go ahead and choose a tile from the supply shop here. After you choose a tile, you're then going to go ahead and take that tile and place it somewhere along your specific uh grid here and you'll be able to place it on top of one of these squares on one of your cards uh, you can cover one or two but you never never cover an entire card and also in general you may never cover your entire starting location card and then go ahead and place it so maybe I want to place it just like that after you've placed the tile that you've chosen you go ahead and take your creature from your starting um, starting creature area and you can place it at any of the three different extra or four or two whatever you have left over uh, starting regions from there you'll follow its movements and this one here specifically says they can move one way in any direction uh, continually going until they can stop and they'll score one point for each tile they land in of that color and they may only land in those colored tiles so I move one space up that way, thus Lee would score me one point, and I would just go ahead and move this marker down to one. After you've done that, you're going to go ahead and switch your creature with uh, the creature that was above the tile that you took. So in this case here, I would switch for this blossom here, move that down, move this up here, and then I would take a new tile and flip it over. After you do that, it would then pass to the next player. And they would then go ahead and have an option to take a uh, tile here and then move their, their creature. So maybe they'll take this one here. Maybe they'll place it like this. After they do that, they'll take one of these guys here. And this one here functions very similarly, except for this color here, moving it one and two, thusly scoring them two points. And then of course, they're going to swap their creatures. And after they swap their creatures, they're gonna go ahead and place out a new tile. And that's basically the idea of the game. And they basically keep going just like that until seven tiles have fully been placed on their board. And in this case, we have two. So there's still gonna be five more rounds in this game. So as you can see, it can go rather quickly. Uh, there's certain rules and for placements with these guys here. Whenever you place a creature to start with, it's gonna be on one of these wilds here, unless it otherwise says so on the card. Most of the creatures will have their movement or all of them will have their movement on the bottom of the card and telling you exactly how they move and in which ways. Uh, like for instance, 
since this one here has to start and end on the same tile and these guys go diagonally and you're going to want them to score the same tile uh, that is in between these two tiles here so these guys here and they all function uniquely so in this case here we have a frog and he likes to jump or this guy here he moves three spaces and then he scores all of the creatures around him or you know, her depending on some butterfly <laughs> and that's basically the idea of the game you're just going to be going back and forth building upon your area so at the end of the game maybe your location could look something like like this and as you can see you can start seeing how your koi garden is going to start getting flushed out and you're going to have to start having little creatures on them based on the locations and where they can move and you'll be scoring points utilizing this little marker here uh, the last thing I didn't explain is the tool here. On your turn before you place anything, you can utilize this tool. And this tool says that you can reshuffle the land cards and replace them from the market so you can take all these guys out and then put new ones down on the field. Basically like a rinse and repeat kind of a thing. But there is a cost to using tools and that is where these lanterns come into play. You'll take these guys and place them on any, any uninhabited space in your area and thusly it'll block a space off. Because remember, creatures can never move through other creatures they can never stop on a space where there's another creature and as well that includes these little lighthouse spaces here so it kind of blocks off your area but it does give you a benefit when it comes to replacing cards in a market or maybe whatever else these cards may or may not do uh, in the kickstarter because i'm sure there's probably going to be more of these guys here and that's basically the game whoever scores the most points at the end of the game is the winner of koi garden okay let's come up and talk about it now everybody does start with a wild piece at the beginning of the game and you kind of get to decide how many spaces on that piece you want to provide for yourself and for the creatures that you move across the field. Do you want to allow yourself to have multiple locations and areas to move on or reduce that number by giving yourself more space to move the creatures and hopefully thusly more points? Each creature functions differently and scores you zen in different ways. Will you be using a flower which will allow you to score points all around you, a koi that lets you move through certain areas and only score those specific type of areas points or maybe like the mosquito that kind of bounces around the board trying to get those diagonal angles now the competitive nature in the game takes place when players steal certain tiles from other players meaning maybe i want this tile but somebody else gathers it and of course gathering along the creature with that tile and then they switch creatures so you're always going to be getting different creatures in the game some creatures may be more covetable than others based on the tiles that are available but only one player at a time can have them and must get rid of them each turn meaning that players will kind of have to fight in first certain areas or tiles and what is more important to you the tile or the creature that is basically up to you and they kind of need to work in a zen like fashion the game does have this kind of sense of calming uh, nature to it where you're placing down the tiles trying to arrange the pieces correctly worrying more about your board and a little bit about what your players are doing but in essence if you do not have a good board a solid foundation for your garden you're not going to score a whole lot of points that being said there is competitive net aspects to the game there's a lot of stealing going on and of course if you want a creature and somebody else does doesn't want a creature. It's perfect and it works great fluidity. However, if you both want the same one, there's going to be a back and forth aspect to them. There's multiple creatures in the game which changes up the variety of play and stylization of your koi garden. And of course, you're always going to be trying to gather all those different pieces along the way to make sure that your garden not only looks beautiful, but also fits perfectly to score you as many points as possible. This is of course a prototype, but it is very, very, very beautiful. I love all the pieces. I like all the different uh, tiles and cards that you'll be utilizing in the game. Uh, whether this will be the full version of the game i'm not sure you can look at the kickstarter to find out before it's here it is a lot of fun uh players who like a more in-depth like game that's going to take a little longer this does roughly play about 15 minutes or so the rounds are pretty quick and straightforward and generally speaking you know where you want to play certain things it's just whether you're willing to to risk it do you want the tile the creature or do they both work together in tandem which seldom is the case uh, and those are the, the greatest opportunities in the game but uh creating this like a uh, uh, sense of turn one, turn two, turn three, these are what I want, and hopefully I gather them, best laid plans, right, is basically how you want to kind of set this game up. Uh, there's also really interesting cards, for instance, you're going to have you utilizing these tool cards here, and when you utilize these, mainly let you like reshuffle the cards or your creatures, uh, they, I, I, they all do different things, but the one I have specifically talks about shuffling your locations in and getting new ones out, uh, it's going to make you get these little guys here, which will block certain spaces. Uh, critters and their movement is very challenging, you'll start off scoring very little points in this game when you first start the first
first couple of games, but you'll progressively get a lot better. And you'll start to learn how the different combinations of cards and, of course, the different combinations of creatures will allow you to move certain areas to score more points. And that's a really important aspect of the game. Now, when I first played the game, I didn't see a whole lot of what was going on. I didn't really understand how to, how to play the best possible turns. And so I was like, oh, it's a really low scoring game. Why is there so many points in it? But as you start to progressively play more and see how the creatures function with their abilities and the locations that you've placed down, you'll start to realize what you need to do for each and every individual creature and what tiles are the most beneficial, the most important. You'll start going, why did you take my tile? Or no, I really needed that creature. It was in my next turn's move. And you'll have to accommodate for those faction, those, fa those choices or factors in the game. Uh, the cards, like I said, beautiful artwork, easy to set up, easy to put, put together and easily, of course, to uh, clean up. And of course, to teach the game, it's really rather simple. Drawing, tile, placing it down, moving a creature based on the creature that you gathered, and then of course uh, switching your old creature that so that way it will be available for somebody else, and then flipping over a new tile and passing turn, and you'll just go through it just like that. Really straightforward game. Uh, complexity, of course, but in nature it's very straightforward and simple. One of those games that I think people who enjoy tile placement, puzzly thought thinking type of games uh, are going to enjoy this game here. If you're looking for th something super deep or something lengthy, um, then maybe not for you, but uh, overall a very satisfactory game. I really, really enjoyed it, and I think you guys will as well, provided you don't mind when somebody steals a piece from you that you just might want. Okay, let's go ahead and get the outro. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Koi Garden. If you're interested, it's currently on Kickstarter for about another week or so. Go ahead and hit the link down below in the description so you can go ahead and pick up this game if you'd like to. Of course, you can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And don't forget to subscribe to the video. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button so you can see more of our videos produced every week, Monday through Friday, roughly, uh, where we show you games just like this one. And of course, speaking of this game, we play games on our live Live stream every Wednesday at 6 30 p.m. PST. You're gonna go ahead and watch those videos if you would like by joining us on Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook. Any of those options are available to see us play games like this. And of course, we give away games on that as well. Join us for uh, the new games we're gonna be producing, like for instance, Moonshell is currently in the works. We're doing um, prototyping samples, it should be arriving to us. Uh, soon, as soon as the break's over here from China. That'll be really cool to see. And if you'd like, you can also support us on Patreon. It allows us to give away more games and continue doing this fun stuff that we be, we've been doing for quite a while now. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to Zen Mastering with you next time while creating a Koi Garden. All right, I was going to say next time, but I realized I already said next time. Well, th th this is awkward. I'm going to just, I'm just going to vanish, okay?